and a bunch of these modules uh, can be united to the Insta code service. So service here uh, can be considered like a uh, application or like a, uh, like a service in the operation system. Uh, the next one is a backend. <laughs> so backend is a in the store is a group of services uh, where each service uh, could be located on a different node, different peer and size of the network. So, and the last term is a function. So, function here uh, means a function from function of the service. So, yes, this function lives on the backend level. Uh, they are written on Aquamarine and they could interact with uh, each service that uh, form the backend. And for users of the backend, this function so looks like an API. It's like a layer that can be called uh, inside the network what is from the external world uh, against network. So let's move on uh, and talk a little bit about WebAssembly and WebAssembly interface types. Uh, I especially like this slide. This slide is taken from uh, CPPCon last year from when as one speed presentation. You can find it by the thing. And uh, here, uh, you can see directed graph and moving uh, left to right, uh, you can construct your own uh, definition of what is WebAssembly. So I ended with this one. Uh, and here for the next part of talk, the most important part that WebAssembly supports only primitive types. So there are only four or five uh, primitive types, depending on the version. So, and there are only integer of 14 point types. Yes, there are no any strings, arrays, records, enums, or so on. So it's the main feature and main limitation of an assembly uh, regarding this stop. So in here you can see complex scheme, how interface types uh, look like in general. And uh, in the center you can see this uh, module. Yeah, this module represents the assembly module that operates only with primitive types, with integers and policy points. And here you can see so-called adapted module. Adapted module is a module that wrapped, uh, wraps this module, is inside the uh, inner module. And uh, so wraps here means that uh, in this layer there could be so-called adapter functions. Uh, the main goal of this adapter uh, functions is just to transform types. For example, uh, so there could be Export and import adapters. Yes, for corresponding exports, there could be corresponding adapter, uh, import adapter or export adapter. And, uh, so the main goal is just to worrying or lifting types. Uh, so, for example, export adapters, uh, worrying types from uh, complex, from strings, arrays, so on, to primitive types, to types that uh, you can pass to the same. And uh, import uh, adapter can uh, lifting it can lift types from primitive to complex type. So the second takeaway from the slide uh, is that WebAssembly is uh, has binary format uh, divided into sections. Here you can see the types of sections, and uh, uh, there is so-called custom section. And the section uh, don't has specified format; it's just a blob of bytes. And they could have a uh, user defined form. And uh, now, uh, interface types uh, in proposal should be placed into this section, into the custom section. So, uh, at the moment, um, interface types is on a feature proposal state. So, feature proposal states mean that it's uh, only at the early stage, yes, uh, because there are uh, fifths uh, of stages, yes, and the uh, feature. Proposal state is only on first of them, yes. Uh, but actually, hmm, if you look at the repository, so this one, interface types in the, in the web assembly, you can see that uh, there were no uh, updates for maybe last uh, half a year, or maybe more. But uh, there is a huge pull request for so this one, you can find by this link. This will rewrite interface types a lot in the, uh, provide, uh, many of new things. But now it isn't uh, in the master, it's just a pull request. 
So, and I will talk uh, more about uh, MasterChef because the school request uh, was made about about two weeks ago, three weeks ago, just like that. So, and uh, as far as I know, interface types are used uh, for server side applications, and maybe uh, so there is the only one tool that uh, can generate interface types. But uh, no one can use it uh, because it uh, bundled from wasn't time. So I mean was minded. So you can pass special flag uh, for uh, to generate interface types. So but uh, but it is so uh, I don't know any other uh, applications, service applications that uh, use interface types. And uh, uh, on the current stage, on the master stage, it's only uh, partially uh, applicable, okay, yes, and uh, you can't use it out of the box, and uh, later I will show why. So let's move on, <coughs> and on the slide you can see uh, support of interface types in more than one runtimes. So actually there are only two runtimes, as far as I know, uh, support interface types in uh, some way. Uh, so you can see that Wasmir, so actually Wasmir has a separate uh, repository, this one. Uh, and uh, this uh, interface types, uh, what's the interface types, designed in such a way that they're uh, virtual machine agnostic. So, but now, Wasmir uh, has been refactored a lot, and uh, this repository can't be used uh, directly with Wasmir. Uh, but actually, we reforked it, and if we want to use it, we need uh, our fork. Uh, it could be integrated with uh, old Wasmir. So, uh, what about last in time? Last in time uh, has uh, had support, but it was brought uh, on March this year. Uh, you can see um, this discussion about it and the uh, plans on this issue, but actually, both last in time, sorry, neither last in time and last in time support interface types uh, out of the box. So, uh, let's move on and uh, uh, discuss how Fluence SDK is made. Uh, so, actually, when we start, um, we uh, think that how, uh, so what, what can be SDK requirements, yes? Uh, and we ended with this one. Uh, once, yes, the first one is uh, that SDK should be uh, most convenient for users, yes? And uh, they should be similar to something familiar. And the familiar thing here is only was imagine. Uh, was imagine actually is one of the, the most uh, important, the most famous projects. Uh, but was imagine um, designed to uh, help integrate with JavaScript, and uh, also we try to afford uh, was imagine and try to integrate it in our server side uh, application, server side engine. But we failed because uh, about maybe eighty percent of what's in binding code with uh, Rust is intended to uh, pass data between Rust and JavaScript. So it was uh, easy to write uh, our own SDK. So and the last one is uh, the easiest way to port a piece of files. So and also you can find the SDK by the same. Uh, uh, of course, so you can realize that uh, it isn't so easy to uh, use interface types now, but despite uh, all the limitations, uh, with interface types you can write on vanilla Rust. So vanilla Rust, I can see something like that. So here you can see the whole world, uh, and uh, so all the things that you need to do here. Uh, for this example to work, just to write uh, the procedure markers. FC. Uh, so this uh, this one uh, makes this missing function export from the result of custom binary uh, and uh, make all the all the work to generate these times that uh, worry at different times between uh, strings and between and between integer and closing uh, So you can find the concrete example here by this. Uh, the main feature of uh, French Computer Engine is support of multi module scheme uh, with shared mass and clean. 
So actually, there are two ways, uh, two types of linking inside uh, the, the OS in the world. The first one is a shared nothing. Yes, the shared nothing here means that uh, modules are linked only by corresponding imports and corresponding exports. So you can see it on this scheme. Yes, here is only importing and export is the way how you can uh, communicate with the module. This module is just a uh, black box and uh, in, in, encapsulates all states inside it. Uh, the next one is a shared everything. On, uh, with this type, you can uh, you can link with, uh, for example, you can uh, access uh, module memory, you can access module table, and some other components. So this, you, you can share everything on the model. So now we support only shared nothing because it uh, will be one of the most uh, useful uh, because of encapsulation. Uh, but how it looks like uh, from the code view, yes. So here you can see uh, three modules, side storage, curl, and local storage. And uh, this one, side storage, so actually this example aims just to download the uh, site with curl and uh, and put it somewhere on the, on the file system. Okay, so just, just an example. And here you can see that uh, we have uh, this binary, site storage, that linked with uh, uh, curl and local storage. And the linking here is done by on, also by new or last way, uh, by uh, foreign block here, it's just, uh, just a uh, echo file. Like it, but also with special macro, uh, the same one. So in here is the only thing that you need to do additionally. And uh, inside this uh, block, you can use tag that's supported by LGP. So uh, regarding these types, uh, we support passing structures, and uh, so as, uh, also uh, you can just write FC. Uh, on top of the uh, structure, and then you can use it uh, like an argument or like an output value. Yes. Uh, and also, we support to use structure inside structure, so you can uh, write some complex inner structures and pass it with this in a uh, But here uh, we have some, maybe some. Not so easy task because, as far as I uh, as I know, uh, in three types regarding using custom section, so and the compiler or uh, and uh, should produce binary that has special section with adapters uh, with some implementation table and so on. So there should be additional uh, section inside binary, and we need to generate it in some. Uh, and here we also have another problem. Uh, Regarding uh, procedural markers, because they are not stateful. Yes, but they are not stateful, and uh, moreover, the order of applying isn't defined. So, uh, for example, in such scheme, if you have uh, in the structure here, uh, in procedure macro, you don't have type of the structure. Yes, you don't, uh, you can't uh, extract all, uh, for example, all fields that has in the structure. You uh, has only its name, only its uh, string, this from yes, and that's so, all. So, and uh, because of this, we are using two scheme uh, of compilation for like in last major. So, on the first uh, on the first stage, we are expanding macro and generate some extra information, and then we use on the second stage this extra information to generate uh, custom section. So, it looks like this. First of all. Uh, so this example is uh, expand to this one. And here we have generate special global. The global is located inside uh, another custom section with uh, also generated uh, generate name. Uh, and this name has serialized to JSON with uh, all information needed to be generated this type. Actually, this uh, they contain all types. Uh, this uh, that can be parsed from, from this one. Uh, and uh, on the second stage, uh, we are using such uh, generated data to 
will generate the result of passing them. And all of this is done by uh, this simple command, a simple, simple CLI utility. Uh, so, to work like this. And now we support uh, following types. We support all integers, boolean, floating points, string, uh, structures, structures, and uh, vectors. And here inside vectors, you can use complex um, types also. For example, you can use vector of records. Or it's such, or even it is such complexions. Yes, and all of this uh, is working fine. But of course, we have uh, things to do. The first one, we, we are in support now in arms and box types. Uh, and uh, we support now only passing by, uh, by value. So, and we are working now to support passing by reference because uh, it's Fish limitation for several applications because here we can pass many by value. So let's move on and discuss uh, the architecture of Fluence Computation. So the architecture of FCE is uh, consists of several layers. On the first layer, uh, we have a so, so called engine or FCE. Uh, next one is a function and service. And uh, on this one, on the facade level, uh, we have uh, modules that uh, designed to uh, support our services uh, that I discussed at the beginning of the presentation and Aquamarine. So site design has different purposes, uh, yes, like, like this one. And uh, so it's like a plugin system. Uh, you can, for example, load and load modules uh, that can be represent can be plugin. For example, uh, this FC can be used in the uh, engine systems, yes. For example, if you want uh, support for games uh, in your games or something like that. Uh, so the API on this level, on the engine level, looks like this. Uh, here we have uh, functions to load and unload modules. So modules can could be loaded by uh, this name, uh, this config file, uh, and here you should provide uh, bytes of this module. And also, module can be unloaded by the name. Uh, here we have options to extract while the state. Mm -hmm. While the state uh, contains here the state of environment variables uh, and uh, all open descriptors by this module. Uh, and uh, mm -hmm. this one, this function aims to uh, provide all exported functions from all modules that loaded inside your engine. So, and the uh, last one, um, of course, you can call. You can call a function from the, from modules that uh, uh, by this given module name and with such arguments. Here, I really easily now uh, encapsulate several uh, complex types, strings, arrays, and that that you can see on the last of the key slides. Uh, the next level aims to uh, has several variants of FC instantiation, so we can create it. So it has several constructors uh, with uh, a lot of uh, different parameters. So its uh, main purpose is to work with complex uh, loads, provide some host uh, functions, and uh, parse JSON. So we can just pass uh, send the JSON value as an argument that. Uh, so I pass uh, by this interface, uh, find interface of module, mm, yes, and try to parse uh, the JSON uh, according to the function signature, function signature types. Uh, so this level uh, is designed to support application service and it aims to set uh, by the variables and prepare bytes. And this one uh, aims to support a community. Uh, so it uh, has persistence on some other features to support the Aquamarine. Uh, that also, so say, as I said, that Aquamarine uh, based on calculus and it also could be compiled to WebAssembly and uh, uh, it could be run on our CE as a, as a, as a model, as a usual model. Mm -hmm. On the slide, you can see an uh, example of configuration. Uh, each service inside Linux has uh, uh, could be 
represented in this search config. This config uh, has uh, several modules, yes. Uh, so the modules we can see on the previous slides, and they can be loaded in this order, like, like in the config. Uh, and inside module we can configure several features. For the first feature, of course, is the name. So this name will be passed uh, to the function directly. Uh, also, also this option missed here, but uh, you can limit uh, the memory so that uh, this model can be used inside the FC. Uh, and also, you can configure why the state. So, here you can uh, set that what files uh, will be accessed by this module. So, and only these files from the broken files uh, can be used by this module. So, it's like what is And also, you can you can not use this to, to some names that uh, you can use inside the binary. Uh, the last section here is amount of binaries. So, in fluence, we realize that not every program could be compiled to WebAssembly uh, because, for example, some complex databases or maybe some programs that uh, use sockets that aren't supported by YSNL and, uh, for example, synchronous programming that also aren't supported. Uh, so, uh, for this one, uh, you have a special option. Uh, here, uh, here for such uh, option inside this config, uh, special function will be generated with such name, and all, so this function will receive one argument uh, of string type, and the uh, return of such string type. And uh, uh, all string passed to this function will be passed the binary that uh, are written here, yes. Uh, so it's work you are just like a COA utility. Mm -hmm. Also in future when uh, circuits will be uh, supported by UIC, we will, uh, we will support a scheme using a unique circuit. So for problems that, for, uh, that has unique circuits. Uh, so uh, let's discuss how multimodal calls work. So let's uh, consider uh, again the example of the three modules uh, when we have site storage, local storage, and kernel. And uh, uh, so this site storage has imports from two modules, is kernel and local storage. And uh, for each import and each export, is released corresponding adapter import and adapter export from interface type one. Yes, and inside this adapter, uh, there is special virtual machine, special interpreter, and this uh, real interpreter. So this interpreter has stack, uh, and uh, it uh, it executes uh, as a limited set of instructions. So let's see how it works in some way. So let's uh, discuss how uh, code is passed from uh, site storage. So Meaning that on site storage we uh, call coral, coral, yes, uh, from coral module. So on the first uh, uh, stage, uh, the, the import adapter of site storage will be called. This import adapter looks like this. So here you can see several instructions. Uh, they are from uh, current uh, proposal, uh, current fiscal proposal. So, uh, what they are doing? They uh, read strings. So, the main purpose is just to uh, get string from site storage memory to Rust, uh, to, or for example, to post type. Yes, so how uh, they do this? Uh, they has this instruction with my name. So, they uh, pop two values from stack. The first one should be pointed to uh, memory inside post instance. And the second one should be the length of the string. So, if memory extracts uh, with help of these two values, string, and uh, create uh, last uh, UTF-8 string, yes. So, in here, uh, by this instruction, code for uh, this one, this ex export adapter will be called. This export adapter looks like this. This is several instructions is needed here. I will show you later. So uh, here is the follows files. Here we need to worry a uh, string uh, to memory of your module. Yes, and to worry the string, uh, first of all we need to our 
heat memory inside this module. Yes. Uh, and uh, allocate receive uh, count of bytes should be allocated. Yes. And we uh, equated by special instruction called string size. Call the string size to string from stack and uh, pull back its size. Then we call allocate and has a pointer inside uh, each of the step. Then uh, we push to the, to the stack uh, string again and we call over memory. So uh, this over memory over in uh, memory. So let's use a pointer and string and just to write memory inside this bus uh, memory, so inside this over bus memory. And then and only then a real uh, work is done. Only then this curl inside bus uh, memory is called. So let's move on and uh, see how uh, the result of string should be passed uh, to this import interpreter, to in import adapter. Uh, so this curve is uh, received for string as an argument and uh, uh, the, cell, uh, the output is also string. So and here we need to pass string back. Uh, so here we also, the, the only thing that we need to do is just to leave memory just to extract memory back from this uh, last instance, yes. And here we will pass automatically uh, to this interpreter. Uh, but here we have a problem. The problem here uh, is that here we need to orient memory, to orient memory back to the side storage was per instance. But to do that we need uh, to do all these instructions. Yes, it looks exactly like this one. Uh, and here you can see that we need two copies of string on the stack. One uh, because there is string size, and the next one because we need uh, to do over this, we need to do over memory. But only one, uh, only one uh, entity is passed as here. And uh, on the master, we do not have any. Uh, instructions for duplicating or swapping values on the stack, so and it's the problem for such space. So, uh, to make this scheme work, we added these instructions. Yes, and uh, finally, it's all like this. So, here, with help of duplicating and swapping, uh, we can reproduce all these execution for the way in memory back. So, actually, for uh, web assembly runtimes, uh, it's a problem to make host functions in easy way. So, uh, what I mean? I mean that uh, you can uh, you can consider a way how you can pass complex types uh, inside uh, WASM or, for example, WASM time uh, memory. So, here we also use uh, power of interface types, and uh, here you can see input descriptor, post input descriptor. That can be used to pass uh, closures on such way, in such form, uh, as an export functions from host, yes, for example, from browser or for uh, standalone runtime. And here, this closure has two arguments. The first one is the context, uh, and that can be used to access memory, table, and so on inside Wasner. The next one is a vector of I value. Uh, I value here is a enum of complex types, and without here is an option of I value. Uh, and uh, but here to link uh, this closure to the right uh, to the right function, uh, those uh, argument types and output types should be specified uh, because we can't get it uh, in one time from here. Yes, it's just a definition. We do not we do not uh, get types from here. Uh, and uh, of course there should be error uh, in mixing when you leave types uh, from last time module. To for site and uh, error handler is the last uh, way how you can uh, how you can deal with these errors. Yes, there is a special demand post error import, and uh, this is inside option. And is if this option is done, uh, so the default behavior is fine. Uh, and so regarding testing. To test all of this, uh, it uh, seems complex. Uh, 
we have special call, a uh, special CLI utility called REPL, uh, and it has uh, this API. So it's uh, similar to Engine API, you can load and load the call module, uh, find out their interface, all public functions uh, of all modules inside the uh, server, a service here. You can uh, consider environment variables, file systems, uh, inodes, yes, it's principal inodes that open to buy this module. And of course, you can call and you can create new. Uh, it looks like this. Here we have an example of IPFS node uh, that consists of two server, uh, two modules. The first one is the IPFS build. It has two main functions, put and get. And in put, you can provide array of bytes. Yes. Uh, and uh, uh, this IPFS viewer will call the IPFS vector put file. And here is the file pass. Uh, and uh, this put you call uh, IPFS binary from our mount binary feature. Yes, and just uh, pass uh, file pass to pull it. And second one is again. I get the same hash. And the hash it extracts away from IPFS on the network. Yes, and here is an example. You can call IPFS view, uh, function called put, yes, with such array, uh, in JSON. Yes, so it's a JSON array with the three numbers, one, two, and three. And here you receive the hash, hash for result of, uh, record inside IPFS. The file system. Uh, and then, for example, if you can find our array stored inside the device, you can pass this uh, cache again and uh, you receive its three numbers. Uh, so, how fast is it? So, you can realize that there are a lot of other hands here, yes, to worry in memory and so on, to compile uh, modules uh, and etc. Uh, etc. Et but uh, here you can, you can see exactly uh, timestamps. So we, has, uh, yeah, sorry, we have ported rings uh, on the assembly. It uh, takes about uh, half of megabytes on the file system in an optimized way. So it's just uh, one module, I think, because we don't need both inside. No such custom section and so on. Uh, so, and uh, the compilation uh, of rings takes this plane to about half a second. Yes, and uh, we have uh, partially a lazy linking and uh, the first call, uh, so set to one, takes about three seconds, three milliseconds, sorry, and what uh, consequent uh, calls takes uh, much less. Yes, it's a uh, uh, macro second, it's a new, yes, it isn't printed on the fish uh, for some reason. So it's about uh, 64 micro, uh, microseconds, milliseconds. Um, so it looks uh, quite fast. Uh, and the feature it has, uh, it has several points. Uh, the first one is support shared listening scheme. Uh, as I discussed, it, uh, it can be important for some uh, application. <coughs> so also you will support uh, when you're raising the input. Uh, then also we are working to uh, support more arguments type inside of assembly. Also we want to support last in time, uh, somewhere in the future, and uh, also not rates. So let's move on uh, to the last section, devoted to why Rust is one of the most useful language for web assembly. So, and uh, I found this three, sorry, this four uh, reasons. So the first one is this uh, support uh, this we tag it out of the box, so we can just use Rust app to, to install it. So it's, it's easy, it's possible, yes. For example, in C++, uh, in previous times, uh, to use this target was pretty well known, you need uh, a lot of work. Uh, so it's, it, was, it was really a lot of work to install this target and use target. So of course, uh, uh, you can use all power of procedural macro uh, inside your program. Then also it has good ecosystem of modern analysis uh, because there are a lot of um, a lot of good examples of uh, using Rust inside of the assembly world. 
And also you, uh, you can use uh, active community for Discord channels uh, and, uh, and support really fast and really uh, So uh, about the first target, I think that the main feature here is just I could compile module, I could compile uh, existing software within a last uh, as easy as possible. And because, for example, it can translate all uh, system services in a way that uh, can be easily compiled to OSM. For example, you can see here a uh, piece of code from Unitix. And uh, uh, since uh, WebAssembly now is simple threaded, so Unitix can be replaced just by one uh, non atomic linear, as here is uh, cell, as I remember. Uh, so it's just a simple one. For example, on C++ in the old type is such target. Uh, if you are really using uh, all and all and so on, there will be import uh, from the binary. Yes, that's quite nice. Uh, also, this target has uh, allocator based on the OMO. And also, if you compile to module, uh, I guess, uh, if you want to reduce imports, uh, I never had because of calling other modules of host. So you can just use the OMO that is available inside the line. So it's uh, a different situation here for C++. Uh, the second one uh, was MCT2 was a target. Also, I forgot about the third one. It was MCT2 in EM scripting one, yes. It's also as easy as possible. So regarding this one, uh, I think that uh, now, and uh, especially in the future when circuits and uh, synchronous programming will be ready, if you, if you allow uh, compiling applications uh, in most easiest way as, as possible, because all system imports, uh, all system usage, for example, uh, when you compile println with uh, such target, uh, there will be about five or six imports, standard imports, or four, six, or x imports, yes, but they are standard for all languages that support wide target. And they are supported by all modern server side of assembly platforms. Uh, but uh, we are missing several features in the Elastic system. The first one is already uh, saved, uh, the stateful procedure markers. So, and uh, we are not the only one who wants them. As you can find discussion, what do you think? And the last one uh, is a minor one. Here is yes, uh, just a way to define uh, new targets for different projects inside workspace. And because now, if you uh, want to combine uh, WebAssembly, so projects that should be compiled to WebAssembly, projects that should be compiled to native, and uh, in such situation, if you want, if you do target check from the root of your uh, repository, there will be, uh, could be a lot of errors because uh, WebAssembly projects will be compiled to native and uh, it's really, it's really uh, hard to make this work. Uh, so, <coughs> uh, here you can see uh, several links. The first one is I uh, saved that link to all Twitter, to these projects. And uh, here you can find uh, all new information, so new updates about uh, We've seen about RustDP, and also you, you can find uh, email newsletter by uh, our main site. And uh, if you want uh, to know more about FC RustDP, you can email me or use my Telegram. So this session, session. So thank you very much. Uh, so I'm waiting for your questions. <laughs>